welcome to the Lakey Report. Today we have with us Talia Bennett, the author of the book ID, How the World Came to Be. Now that's a that's a pretty big question for one person to answer there. And I'll be honest, I only got a chance to skim through your book when I was eating my morning bowl of tricks. Well, um, my book is about intelligent design, and that is the theory that the world could not have started with random happenstance, rather that the process must have been directed. I believe that the Earth is far too complex to have randomly occurred on its own, and that a creator designed the world and the species that inhabit it. Definitely have to agree. I, I think God's a, a rather intelligent man. I mean, he had the sense to make all of this and uh, turn water into wine. He liked fishing. I mean, I like the dude. Uh, also today with us, we have a super scientist, Hayden Messerman here, the author of a very complicated book called Organic Chemistry, The Applications and Implications of Chemistry on the Natural World and Evolutionary Theory. Well, Hayden, I'll be honest with you as well. The title kind of scared me a bit as well as the length, so I've only read the back cover. Tell me more about your book. Uh, well, in my book, um, I go through all the mechanisms that we scientists use in the chemistry laboratory to, um, to explain the world around us. I also go through uh, evolutionary theory. Um, evolution is the key mechanism for understanding and unifying all of the areas in the study of biology. Um, it has been studied in depth by many generations of scientists and is supported with a large body of evidence that coming from, that's coming from a wide range of biological disciplines. So I just got to ask you here, have you read the Bible? Because uh, I got 1,200 pages of data right here. Uh, I got to be honest, I, I haven't read the Bible. So uh, I'll throw this out on the table for both of you, starting with you. Um, aren't intelligent design and creationism the same thing? Well, intelligent design is not a form of creationism. It is a theory that is based on evidence in the world around us. For example, think about a watch. A watch is a very complex piece of equipment. How could it have just come into existence on its own? Also think about the eye. Imagine all the different parts of the body that need to be coordinated with them in order for them to function. Once again, it's far too complex to have naturally occurred. Well, you know, I think from a scientific standpoint, crea creationism and intelligent design are actually the same thing. Intelligent design is what scientists like to call the wedge. Um, it is an underhanded way of trying to put religion into the science classroom. Or, you know, it, it is a creation science. Creationists use the argument of complexity, as you just did. Uh, for example, um, you use the example of the eye. Uh, what, they, what intelligent design proponents fail to realize is that there are, you know, there are thousands of eyes that are in all different levels of complexity, you know, down to a single optic nerve that can sense light. Science is the use of observation and experimentation to understand the natural world. Uh, you know, the key world, word here is natural. Intelligent design creationism attempts to explain the natural world with supernatural explanations. This is not testable. I mean, science is the underhanded I mean, the underlying reason that science works is that it's observations and experiments that we can perform in our world. And, you know, drawing from those supernatural explanations is just, it, it doesn't work in science. Um, you know, science is asking why plants have green leaves, and then what we can do in the science lab is run an absorption spectra on the chlorophyll to discover that plants use blue light and red light but they reflect the green light back. So that's why plants are green. You know, this explanation is not supernatural. It's something we can explain through the laws of physics and um, through observing our natural world. So uh, are you saying God is a myth? You can't disprove God. See, this is where right, I... Right, because he exists. So I've already kind of played my hand here. I believe in God and you don't, so I've got that on you. So this is kind of unfair because God's on my side. But uh, you, you guys have both discussed a lot about theory. Um, isn't evolution just a theory? Well, ID is also a theory based on evolution, or based on evidence, just like evolution is. Students don't have to believe it, but just to understand the mechanism of the world is preferable than having just one explanation of how our world came to be. See, the thing that we, that intelligent design proponents misinterpret is the definition of a scientific theory. See, in science, you know, the definition of theory is a mechanism for explaining a vast body of facts, of observable and experimented facts. Um, whereas the colloquial, you know, the colloquial version of theory is more 
you know, I have a theory about something. I may not have the evidence to back it up, but this is what I think happens. And I feel like that's what intelligent design proponents, you know, that's all they've got going for them is this is something they believe in and there's no factual or, you know, obser observable evidence in the natural universe to explain their theory. So, um, and the thing about the intel or the evolutionary theory is it is constantly being tested, you know, there's a vast body of evidence to support this theory and it's continually being tested by making new observations and performing new experiments on the world around us. Well, I don't think we need to question what's going on in the world. I think we should just go on and live our lives. I mean, wouldn't it be much simpler if we were shepherds? I know I wish I was still a shepherd. But, uh, so, why, why do they both or not both need to be in a science classroom? Doesn't teaching evolution kind of imply to our children that they have to put aside their religious faith in order to do science? See, coming from the scientific standpoint, I think that, you know, as I've explained previously, you know, intelligent design and creationism, it's not science. So, you know, science, the goal of science is to just explain the natural world around us. And I think that you can still have faith. I think you can still believe in something higher, but it just doesn't belong in the science classroom. Um, that could be a separate class. I mean, religion has had huge cultural impacts on human civilization, and I think those are extremely important. But I just think that science and religion, there's a divide there. And, you know, religion can't be explained by science. They're trying to answer different questions to human existence. There are also many scientists that do believe in faith at the same time. So I think that the two together can function in a science classroom because even students don't have to believe what is being taught to them, just the mechanics of it. Well, I think it all comes back to right here, being obedient to God's word. I'd like to thank you both for joining me today. Uh, it was a good chat with you, and uh, we'll be right back after this break. <laughs>